ladies and gentlemen. It's a real pleasure to have you all here today. Uh, what I'll be talking about um, with you today um, is, is the main RB Rails procurement challenges that we've had over the past year and uh, some of the main lessons learned that we've had. Also, uh, on a couple of main points um, that are important uh, to keep in mind going ahead. And then we will have a quick look at the uh, supplier survey results um, as we ran a, a supplier survey uh, before this, uh, this forum. So one of the uh, big challenges that we've had and that, that um, anyone in the project world always has is planning. How do you ensure that you appropriately plan your activities? How do you ensure that um, you have sufficient planning but you don't over plan? And in, in this project, it's a massive task to do because of various procurement laws that we have, uh, very different expectations, very different markets, very different uh, suppliers, and all this needs to be balanced. So taking into account all this, and also the fact that we operate in a project world where um, instead of running operations where things can, can be very standard, we need to make sure that we have the agility as well that we need um, across the very different types of procurement activities that we have. So the, the development of uh, set templates and, and uh, processes in place in its own is not sufficient. We have to have the agility. And this is what we're constantly doing um, and we, we will be doing going forward to try and always balance the planning in the, in the appropriate way, and also to strengthen uh, our, our common procurement standards together with the, uh, with the implementing bodies. This is, this is a very imp uh, important aspect of, of our procurement aims. Secondly, um, the, um, the, the big challenge of last year has been uh, moving across to the e-tendering system as the Latvian government introduced uh, an e-tendering system last year. This has been a learning curve for uh, the suppliers and us, similarly. Uh, for us, uh, we have had to uh, undertake the learning of that system whilst guiding the suppliers through. So it's been a double, uh, double challenge for us in that regard. However, we believe that this is a better approach. Um, it's, it's clearer, it's structured uh, a bit better, it's easier to understand, it's more transparent, and it provides a better fairness in the process as well and record keeping. So please use the system, and as, as Cosmos mentioned before, don't leave it to the last minute. Um, I think a good example to that is that we actually uh, saw the sort of um, analogy of keeping things to the last minute with a registration um, of suppliers to this forum, where by the time the time had already passed, the deadline had already passed for the registration, we, we um, got suppliers calling up and asking, well, I can't really register anymore. What can I do to register? And, and so we urge you not to leave it to the last minute because also the, um, the e-tendering system, it doesn't allow us uh, to access any of the content that you submit before we actually open it officially. So there shouldn't be any concerns in relation to this. Now, uh, it, together with uh, being a very new procurement organization, uh, come many challenges, uh, and, and one of them is making sure that we are understood by the market, by the suppliers, what our expectations are, what our requirements are, to make sure we are clear, we are understood. This is something that we also do constantly. Uh, Barbara Robeson mentioned earlier uh, the meeting before uh, the DTD procurement exercise regarding um, understanding the market positions with 30 uh, suppliers. And, and this is what we do also, uh, the clarity uh, that we ensure in our processes through the Q&A sessions that we have as part of our procurement exercises. And what we have done and what we will continue to do um, is a range of, of uh, guidance uh, documents like the checklist that we did for suppliers which is available also on our website to make sure that nothing is missed in the procurement exercise. Um, so this leads us to understanding the market better, making sure that in terms of uh, the supplier market, we do have continuous dialogue and uh, we need to then have this dialogue in a structured manner 
to make sure that we balance the requirements in, in the most appropriate way for the benefit of the project. Uh, but one of the challenges that always is, is the level of procurement that we run. And we have learned over the past uh, year that, that we are actually running a very high level procurement. It is a challenge going forward as well, because with uh, any level that you operate come expectations. But we are keen to uh, maintain and develop these, uh, these levels that we operate at. Now, as, as an average, uh, we have had in our procurement exercises uh, four to five um, suppliers as an average per uh, procurement exercise, where a minimum is, is three. So we are doing quite well in that regard. And uh, we have managed all this whilst uh, having a, a developing organization, a growing organization, where we, we have developing roles, changing responsibilities, increasing workload, as you saw from the procurement presentation. And um, we have to grow the team at the same time and ensure adherence to, uh, to legal uh, details, legal requirements. So this is, in short, the main uh, main elements of, of the challenges and lessons learned over the past year. Now let's have a quick look also at the supplier survey results um, at some of the main aspects that came out of, of this survey. It was run by um, RB Rail uh, with, with sort of um, our particular procurement exercises in mind and we had a total of 62 respondents to this. Most of the respondents were uh, in the supply of materials, design and construction, with the size of organizations, mainly uh, large organizations, uh, slightly over 50%. And most of the participants had participated in our procurement exercises on well, RB Rail. Uh, the overall quality of uh, our uh, tendering process is high or very high, which is more than 66% of the total opinion of the respondents. And most of the respondents also find information from our website, which is actually um, the best place probably uh, to find information because this is what, what we are keen, very keen to keep up to date. And, and this is what we're continuously doing on a daily basis. In terms of accessibility of information, we had questions regarding whether it is clear to the suppliers uh, how to approach us and how to find information. And most of the suppliers, the majority, 90% uh, in both cases, found that it is clear. Regarding uh, quality of uh, service that we provide uh, as part of the procurement exercises that we run, uh, we asked, the, asked two questions. Uh, the quality of the tender process administration itself and the quality of technical question and responses administering. And uh, responses to both these questions were actually very similar with at least 65% of the respondents saying that the quality level of the service is good or very good. So you can see the same for the technical as well. In terms of documentation, there were four questions uh, relating to uh, procurement requirements and the requirements for documentation that needs to be submitted. Uh, technical specification, quality, uh, the quality of uh, results that we provide once we have completed with a tender process with the results and uh, the, the level of quality of our terms and conditions. And the majority again uh, thought that the quality was either good or very good. And the time allowed in our process we found from the respondents was mostly uh, sufficient and the majority of uh, the, the participants in our tender exercises were able to meet the requirements that we set in our uh, packages. Regarding fairness in the process, we have learned with this survey that we are fair, or mostly fair, by this. So 65% believe that we are fair in the process, and this is what we are keen on as well. Uh, we are very, very keen to make sure that we have fairness in the process. And uh, with that in mind also, it is very good to see that 90% uh, of all the respondents say that they would participate in our tender, uh, tenders procurement exercise in the future. And there was no one that would, uh, would, would have said uh, no by this survey uh, regarding this question. 
Uh, we also asked about um, what the main aspects were for participants in this survey that, um, that why, why they, they didn't participate in our uh, procurement exercises. And uh, there were two main reasons. One was there had not been suitable opportunities yet, and the second being uh, the information wasn't found in, in enough uh, sufficient time. So I would encourage, please have a look consistently at our website, and please subscribe to uh, the procurement newsletter as well. At the very last slide on, um, in this presentation, you will find the link also to the, to the web page uh, that, uh, where you can, you, you can put your details in and register for this, um, for this newsletter. And this, for now, is all from me. I'll be hanging around all day um, in, at this event, so if there's anything you want to ask me, or come, come and uh, have a chat with me, happy to help. Um, I would like to leave you with a final uh, thought as my time is up. Uh, in this project, noting the importance, the magnitude, and the uniqueness of this project, we should not aim to simply follow the best practice in procurement. We should be aiming to develop the best practice and ultimately lead the best practice. This is one of the projects in politics where we should definitely aim for this. Thank you.